Homework 1.5b is on the limit definition of a derivative, and I'm going to go over a large part of it with you. Um, I hope it'll make it pretty easy. This asks us to find, part A asks us to find f prime of 1, given that f of x is x squared plus 3. And we're using this limit definition of the derivative that says that f prime at various values is equal to the limit as x approaches that value of this formula here. So first, f prime of 1 is equal to the limit as x approaches, since c is the number we plugged in here, c is the number here as x approaches 1, of f of x minus f of 1, because 1 is c, over x minus 1. Now, we need to do this limit, um, and so we need to plug in what we know about this. This is the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is x squared plus 3. I'm going to write that, x squared plus 3. f of 1 is what I get when I plug in 1 into f of x. So f of 1 is 1 squared plus 3, which is 4. So we're going to get f of x minus f of 1, which is f of x minus 4, all over x minus 1. This can be simplified. This is going to be x squared minus 1. And rather than rewrite this whole thing, um, I know x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. That limits 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate. I know I'm going to need to use a trick. Since I know the, like what this generally looks like, it sure looks like it's going to be factor and cancel. And I know how to factor x squared minus 1. x squared, this is minus 1 here. x squared minus 1 is x plus 1 times x minus 1. It's the difference of two squares divided by x minus 1. And I can cancel out the factor of x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. So the last thing is we're doing the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. Um, I'm going to write my answer in a clear and concise way. f prime of 1 is 2. And what this means is on this graph of y equals x squared plus 3, at x equals 1, the slope of the tangent line is 2. So we're going to graph y equals x squared plus 3 here. Looks like this. We should know this from Algebra 2, Algebra 1, a long, long ago. Here is our graph. And we want to see at x equals 1, it says f prime equals 2. That does not mean there is a point at 1, 2. That is not correct. These are not y values. These are the values of the slopes. What this means is that at x equals 1, the slope of the tangent line is 2. And we can see that. The slope of the tangent line at x equals 1 is 2. Okay. Um, I'm going to go down to here. We can draw an infinite number of tangent lines, one at each point, and they'll all be different. And in calculus, we want to be efficient. We don't want to spend forever on our homeworks. And if we were calculating the slope of the tangent line at every point, that would take forever. So we're going to be learning this new trick, which is, and this is what the whole point of deriving limits was for, was being able to find a function that gives us the derivative. And this is the limit that will give us that function. I'd like to make sure you have a conceptual understanding of what's going on here. What we're doing is we're saying, let's say we have a graph with some function. Who knows? And at some point x, well, the y value there at that point is f of x. This point is x comma f of x. And what we want is we want to be able to find the value of the tangent line at any point x comma f of x. And so if we do a limit that lets us do that here, uh, we'll be able to have the derivative at any point. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, let's pick a very nearby point. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say, all right, let's pick a really small number h and add it on to x. This x value is going to be x plus h. And so what's going to happen is x and x plus h are near each other. This y value is x plus h comma, well, whatever the function is, it's f of x plus h. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the slope between 
x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h is f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What's interesting about the x2 minus x1 here is that when we do x plus h minus x, the x's go away and we just end up with h. And that's where this formula is coming from. And the limit is going to be, we're going to let h go to 0. So we're going to say, hey, what if h gets really, really close to 0, in which case these two points would be right on top of each other. Um, this will give us the derivative at that point. And let's do it for our f of x here. In this case, f of x equals x squared plus 3. So the derivative is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of, now this is the tricky part, we need to do f of x plus h. That means we take x plus h and plug it into x. So, this is going to be, um, well, x, x used to just be x, now it's going to be x plus h. That x plus h goes in for x, and we get x plus h squared, that was the x squared part, plus 3, minus f of x. And f of x here is x squared plus 3, all over h. Um, we need to simplify this. Uh, right now, if we plugged in h equals 0, we would get 0 over 0. We're going to expand this binomial. Remember that we have a binomial trick, which says that if you want to square a binomial, you square the first term, multiply these two together, and double them, and then square the last one. I'm going to rewrite everything else. Uh, we need to make sure we distribute this negative. We're subtracting all of the f of x, so it's minus x squared minus 3, divided by h, and there are going to be some things that cancel. Everything without an h is going to cancel out, which is pretty nice. x squared minus x squared cancels. Plus 3 minus 3 cancels. So what we're left with is 2xh plus h squared over h. Still, if we plug in 0 for h, we'll get 0 over 0. So we're going to use our factor and cancel trick here, and we're going to factor out an h from the top. So h times 2x, h times 2x gives us 2xh, plus h, h times h gives us the h squared, all over h, and now multiplying by h and dividing by h cancels out, and we can do direct substitution. h goes to 0, so 2x plus 0 is just 2x. The answer is that the derivative function, f prime of x, is 2x. And what this says is that the slopes of the tangent line are 2 times x for any x value. Um, so, for instance, earlier we found that f prime of 1 was 2. Let's do it using our formula. f prime of 1 is going to equal, um, well, the formula right here says that f prime at any x is just 2 times that x. It's just 2 times 1, which is 2, which is what we got in part A. All right. On the back, um, I'm not going to do all of these with you, um, but we're going to talk about this formula more. Uh, I, I just want to make sure we understand how to plug in. So we're doing f of you're doing the same setup each time. Limit is h approaches 0 of f of, here's our f of x, f of x plus h. So we're just plugging in x plus h wherever there's an x. Sometimes there's more than one x, and x plus h goes in both places. So it's going to be f of x plus h is going to be negative 5 times x plus h plus the 1. That's f of, this is f of x plus h minus f of x. And f of x is just negative 5x plus 1 all over h. And we're going to do this limit. Everything that doesn't have an x, h should cancel out. And I hope that helps. Um, this challenge one, uh, I, I don't want to go too much into it. I will kind of give you a hint. f of f prime of x here is going to be, again, f of x plus h, which means you put in x plus h, so sine of x plus h minus sine of x, f of x plus h minus f of x, all over h. 
and I hope you are not trying to make up your rules, like trying to change things up. To be able to do this, you need to use your pre-calculus. Um, this is the sign of a sum, and there's a formula from pre-calculus that if you don't remember, you might want to look up for how to split up the sign of a sum um, and rewrite it. That's my only hint I'm going to give it to give to you. Good luck on the rest of your homework. I hope it goes well.